Hello and welcome to Live in the Solution. I'm your astrologer and tarot card reader, Mary Trimble, here with your readings for November the 18th through the 24th. Welcome to this very cold and blistery day in New York City. <laughs> My building is freezing as well. The heating isn't on. But anyway, I digress. Um, if you are new, welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by. And I hope you enjoy these readings and that you will return. And if you are returning, thank you so much. I really appreciate your loyalty, your love, and support. Um, these readings are for the collective. Uh, so just take what resonates and leave the rest. You know, sometimes the readings are very specific. Spirit wants to reach a certain person. Um, so uh, let go of it. So don't, what I just want to say, don't assume that everything I say here is applicable to you. Um, now, these are for your sun, moon, and rising. So if you know your moon and rising, um, check out those readings too. And all the links to the other videos will be below. Sometimes it takes me a minute or two to get them up. But if you go to the playlist for this month, you will find them in there. Sorry, it's a little thing. There. <laughs> it's a little piece of fluff. Um, so, as I said before, these are general readings. If you would like a more personalized, in-depth, and um, tailored reading for you, uh, click on this link here. It will take you to my website, and you can see the kind of readings that I offer. Um, also, I have a Facebook group, guys, and it's a, it's a private group, and every two weeks I do a live stream in that group. Um, which correlates with the full moon and the new moon. So next week, uh, the new moon is in Sagittarius, I believe. Um, so I will be, um, I will be doing a live feed for the new moon. Um, and when when I do the live feed, wh whoever shows up, I look at their horoscopes, and we have this really lovely interactive you know, live feed, and I look at how the new moon will affect them, how they will receive the energies from that new moon. And I have my uh, tarot cards in hand, and I answer uh, questions. So we have a really good time. You just have to, you know, uh, request uh, to get in, and, um, and Bob's your uncle. You're in. <laughs> now, uh, what else? Oh, yeah. Another way to support this channel is through Patreon. Click on this link here. Check out my Patreon page. I post things in Patreon that I don't post anywhere else. And I want to take this opportunity to thank my patrons so much. I really appreciate you guys. You really help me out. Um, and other than that, just please like, uh, comment, share, and subscribe. So without further ado, oh no, I would just want to say um, these readings come in three sections. The intro, which is this, then there's the astrology report, and then there is the tarot reading. And I put skip time um, stamps um, in the show more section below so that you, if you're checking out Sun, Moon and Rising, you don't have to listen to the astrology all over again or the intro. You can just skip straight to your uh, tarot reading. So without further ado, let's go to the astrology report, shall we? Hello and welcome to the astrology section of your reading for November the 18th through the 24th. I'm your astrologer, Mary Trimble, here to tell you what's going on in the celestial sky this week. Let's start with Tuesday, November the 19th. Mars moves into Scorpio. When a planet moves into another sign, it's a huge shift in energy. Um, now, Mars comes home to Scorpio because it's the co-ruler of Scorpio. It rules along with Pluto. Um, when Mars moves into Scorpio, um, it's about power and strength and control. It's about getting what one wants and having the energy to go after it. Um, so we will feel energized and perhaps inspired and motivated. Um, it's also a time when our libido is raised. <laughs> It's very high and active, I might add. So some of us might get lucky. Hey, plan your date. 
on Tuesday. <laughs> anyway, on Wednesday, Mercury stations direct at 11 degrees. Now, look, Mercury is the planet of communication, uh, electronics, mechanics, short distance travel, right? Um, and 11 is a very powerful number. I feel this is one of those, when this plan, when any planet stations direct or retrograde grade, it slows down and the qualities of that planet are emphasized at this time. So things may break down and have to be repaired, which I'm sure you've gone through for the last, you know, six weeks or, or f three weeks for whatever. Actually, we were in a very a long period of a shadow time and we will be still have a shadow time, um, which means that we'll be feeling the effects until Mercury kind of speeds up and goes forward again. Um, so at the same time that Mercury is stationing direct, it's also sextiling the moon. So that is a lovely uh, aspect. So with the sextile to the moon, uh, we may have heartfelt conversations and have the courage, perhaps have the courage to express our needs and wants from loved ones. Um, but I will say this, emails and texts can go awry in this energy. So make sure you're sending uh, your communications to the right recipient. You know, things like that <laughs> happen. Be careful. Be careful what you put in writing anyway. Um, so Friday, on Friday, November the 22nd, the sun moves into Sagittarius. So this is also a huge shift, right, in energy. And at the same time, it's in a lovely trine to Chiron. Uh, the beautiful relationship between the sun and Chiron will set the stage for us to help and heal others with the empathy gained while surviving our own challenges in life, because Chiron is the wounded healer. Now, this will especially affect those who are in the uh, helping, who are in helping careers, you know, um, or those looking for a career in helping others. So any kind of service career, you know, nurses, nonprofit, whatever it is. So on Sunday, the November the 24th, Venus conjuncts Jupiter. This is an incredible uh, aspect. Venus conjunct Jupiter is about love and abundance, harmony and joy. Um, this is an easy aspect. Um, where you don't really have to take any action. You just become a magnet for all good things. Any hard work that you've done in the past will pay off and success is imminent with this. And it's very, you know, what you've worked on will come to fruition and, you know, and get you'll get paid. I love that. This, your inner beauty attracts love and helpful people. Go out and bask in this energy. It's important to be out and to make connections. Be there so that you can take full advantage of this energy. This is a celestial gift, guys, this is. It's the best energy for falling in love. Any new encounter has the possibility for a lasting romance, so that's exciting. Now, it's great for finances too, guys. Uh, investments should really do well, especially in art, jewelry, and other luxury items. Um, you could be the beneficiary of an unexpected windfall. Cha-ching, darling. <laughs> I love that. Now, on the same day, Mars opposes Uranus. So that's a little bit of an, a challenging aspect, um, but it can also be motivating. It's an explosive energy. It can be explosive, uh, which can be impulsively expressed. It's like no thought uh, before um action or verbalization. So, you know, it's like if you have any kind of built up resentment towards someone, this could come out. It's likely to come out during this time. I, so I think of road rage a little. It's kind of, you know, 
And, and when I say road rage for, rage, for me, when I'm driving, I'm just cursing at people, you know, <laughs> in the car on myself. They don't hear it. It's just me. I go, I'm not even going to go into what I say, but I just get very frustrated on the road. <laughs> so, you know, that's how it comes out for me. Um, and also, you know, resist the urge to engage in social media wars, you know, because it can come out like that. Um, it's like, you know, you could say things that you may regret later or react in a way that you may regret later. Now, you know, with this lovely energy of Venus conjunct Jupiter, it could be expressed in a physical way, such as exercise or sports. You can work that out in that way. Um, you can work all that pent up energy and frustration out in, you know, exercising, do things like that. Or uh, in a sexual way, make love, darling, not war. <laughs> Uh, this energy brings in the need for freedom of expression. That's what it is. It's of not wanting to be restricted by the norms of society. It's advisable to have more foresight, though, and resist the urge to react. Um, try instead to pause before saying something. You could later regret and respond diplomatically. <laughs> um, and Monday... I'm just going to quickly mention this. Uh, Venus moves into Capricorn, where the focus will be on materialism and status. And also on Tuesday, we have the new moon in Sagittarius. So join me in the Facebook group to find out how that will affect you personally. Okay, guys, without further ado, let's go to the tarot card section of your reading, shall we? Hello, Scorpio, and welcome to your reading for the tarot card section of your reading for November the 18th through the 24th. Um, this is for Scorpio. What wonderful gifts, guidance, blessings, and helpful information can you give Scorpio for this coming week? One last shuffle for posterity. May these cards be filled with love, abundance, blessings, and compassion. Scorpio, this is the last vestiges of your birthdays for those of you whose birthdays it is. Three cards for Scorpio, please. Three cards for Scorpio. Mars is coming home to your sign, darling. You're going to feel that power of Mars. You'll be very affected then. Oh, there's one. Two more cards. Four. Oh, there we go. Two more cards. Oh, you got yeah, you got two. Lovely. Okay. There's a lot of uh, crossover here. Um, oh wow, it's so windy out there. It's howling. The wind is howling, screaming. It's freezing cold out there. No joke, guys. It's no joke. I don't have heating in my house. It's hence my garb. Anyway, uh, these are clarifying cards for Ma for Mars for Scorpio. <laughs> Mercury stationing direct, still retrograde, but it's stationing direct. What wonderful gifts, guidance, and blessings and helpful information can you give Scorpio through these clarifying cards for November the 18th through the 24th? May these cards be filled with love, compassion, abundance, and blessings. Please clarify. There we are. Please clarify. Please clarify. Oh, interesting. Okay, let's take a look at your cards, Scorpio. The first card out for you is the Queen of Swords, clarified by the Priestess. Then you have the King of Pentacles, clarified by the Three of Wands. Then you have the Hermit card, clarified by the moon. 
Scorpio, the first card out, is the Queen of Swords. Now, if you're the Queen of Swords, you're being asked to soften your language somewhat. Listen, Mars is a volatile uh, planet, you know, it's you know, it's action, it's nervous energy. You've got, if you're, you need to kind of exercise or do some sports or, you know, make a lot of love, <laughs> get rid of that pent up energy because you'll be feeling it, particularly at the end of the week when, um, you know, Mars is opposing uh, Uranus. So you really kind of need to um, find an outlet for that energy and, and be careful. This is the tendency to say something cutting. Um, and, you know, it, it's not like it's not the truth, but you say it in a kind of, you know, cutting way. Uh, so you, I would say be very careful about the way you speak. Now, another way to interpret this also is that an, a business opportunity might come in, perhaps with a partner you wouldn't necessarily choose. Uh, it might be an unusual kind of, uh, I don't want to say marriage, but when it's a partnership, I'm not talking about romance. I'm talking about business. Um, it is a kind of marriage. Um, so it's not somebody you would normally kind of associate with or go into business with, but uh, this is somebody that can really take you far. So I would say that this is um, a a great opportunity for you. And and look, clarifying it is the high priestess. So you have to use your gut feeling. It, your head, you might say, oh, no, I can't. I don't, I don't want to get involved with this person. You know, she's a little abrasive and a little, you know. But um, she tells the truth. She doesn't intend to hurt people. And she ended up, she ends up leaving a wake of, you know, uh, wounded in her path. Um, some people can't take it. They can't take the truth. The truth hurts. So, you know, if you value the truth and you value her experience and her expertise and her, you know, it would be really a, a good choice. And, you know, trust your gut feeling because the high priestess will guide you and she'll say, yeah, go for it. When you may not, your head will say no, but your heart will say, yeah. Trust your instincts this week. I would definitely, because she's the high priestess is here. Look, you're intuitive and psychic anyway. Naturally, it, you know, it's built in. It's like part of your DNA. It's part of your psyche. But some people just deny it and, you know, they're a little more cerebral and they don't want to trust their gut feelings. So I'm saying that this is a really important time to trust it. Also, you know, you could get that feeling where this is not right and go with that. Just don't second guess your gut feeling. You know, maybe, you know, you'll get the message not to. Um, just listen to that. And then you've got the King of Pentacles. The King of Pentacles is, all, look, he likes opulence. He loves luxury. He's, you know, he he likes expensive you know, possessions. He likes to spend his money, but he works hard. He's not, look, he's not, under no illusion. He knows that in order to have all that opulence and luxury that you need to work hard. And he's not opposed to like rolling up his sleeves and getting in the dirt with his subjects out in the fields. You could find him toiling away along with his subjects. He has no problem working hard as long as he's getting the you know, uh, the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. <laughs> you know, he, he, he works for money. He works hard for his money. So hard for it, honey. <laughs> I just can't help myself. I swear. I can't help myself. Okay. So, um, clarifying the king of pentacles is a three of, uh, the three of wands. And the first thing I got was teamwork for this. That's interesting because he's like, the, the three of wands is all about, you know, making long-term optimistic plans. But uh, I'm really getting teamwork. And this is Jupiter, darling. You know, this is Jupiter coming in. This is three expansion. So I feel that 
Um, you have this, I feel that, may, I feel, really do think somebody's coming in uh, that's going to kind of um, bringing an opportunity to perhaps make some money. Whatever it is, it's like, I think you're going to get further, even if it's just a project at work, being a part of the team and working with people this week. Um, and I think it's time to make those long uh those long-term optimistic plans, like make those plans. I'm not talking months, I'm talking years. Do a five to ten year plan and see where you where you see where do you see yourself in five years? Where do you see yourself in 10 or 15? You know, they did that, well, of course, you know that old thing. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. They did a study in Harvard, I believe it was. Um I think it was Harvard or Cambridge, somewhere like that. And they looked at people that had plans. And people who had 15-year plans really did well. The, the people who had five and ten year five-year plans did okay. People who had 10-year plans did great. Uh, people who had no plan didn't do so well. It was really interesting how that study came out. Anyway, I can't remember the actual name of the study or who did it, but I remember reading it years ago. So the next card out is the Hermit. And the Hermit is all about connecting within. It's all about meditation. It's all about not allowing your mind to control you. Look, when we, our minds, they're like, mon it's like the monkey brain, right? It's going to tell us you're not good. You're not blah, blah, blah. That person's no good. And they're talking about whatever it is. You know, it's like, blah, it's constant chatter in your head. We call it the monkey brain in, in uh, meditation. And if you listen to that, you are liable to react in an inappropriate way because that's the insanity. The monkey brain is the insanity, our insanity. So it's not like we can control it or shut it up, but we can definitely quieten it down. And we can get to a place where we no longer are ruled by our minds. We're no longer um, reacting because of the emotions that those thoughts bring up. So it's, I, I can't stress how important it is to meditate this week in particular. And you have the moon clarifying this, which is really interesting because what's going on this week there? I'm sorry, I've got to check my chart now because Something is trying the moon at the beginning of the week, if I'm not mistaken. Let me go into my chart. Um, I think the sun is the sun is. Oh, no, the sun is trying to Chiron. That's right. The sun is trying to Chiron at the beginning of the week. It's an opportunity to help and heal others. Um, well, What's really interesting is the hermit holds the light up, the light at the end of the tunnel and shows others the way to go. And the moon kind of sheds a light on the truth and the situation. You have an opportunity to, um, to express what you need or to help others, to show others the way, to light up their path. You know, we, we have this opportunity to this week to, you know, Chiron's the, wound, uh, the wounded uh, warrior, right? He's the wounded healer. And so um, we can heal people or help people uh, through all the trials and tribulations that we have actually gone through. And how we got through them, we can help others go through them. And that's so interesting because that's what the hermit does, right? Uh, so I really feel that, at, you know, at this time as the sun, it, you're going to feel that shift in energy. The sun is moving from uh, your sign into uh, Sagittarius and at the same time trining uh, Chiron. And not only that, Mars is moving. You've got it. There's a lot you're definitely feeling that shift in energy this week. There's definitely a lot going on. So really thought, that, that moment between thought and action, meditation can help you live in that space before you react. 
and and show the light show others how you know show others the way you be the light at the end of the tunnel for others illuminate their path Scorpio, thank you so much for tuning in. Please don't forget to like this video, share it with friends, family, neighbors, co-workers, social media, comment. I live for comments and feedback and I um, always respond. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. Mwah. I love you all and I'll see you next week.